So we're going to continue looking at Nvidia's Omniverse and now we're going to look at the camera settings and also the render settings. Straight off the bat, I'm not going to be rendering off in real time. I'm going to come to the top here and select RTX Interactive Pace Path Tracing. So this is what I'm going to be rendering. The renderer, we've got selected up the top here. And at the moment, I've got it set as all the default settings. So I literally just reset everything. So let's kind of start going through the process of making it look prettier. First thing I'm going to do though is set up the camera. So I want to create a depth of field. And if you don't have this top option up here, let me just hide that away. I'm just going to click on this little arrow next to the camera. Just increase the selection. And from here in this selection up the top, I can select the F stop. So 1.2 and there we go. Now, if I wanted to actually set the uh, focal length, I can click on the target, click and drag. I want to select this dude's nose. And now we have our focal distance length, focal length. Come on, Marco. Now let's start jumping up into the post-processing on the render settings. So post-processing, I'm just going to turn on auto exposure. I do want it a little bit brighter. So the white point scale, I'm just going to go control left click so I can actually type in the value and I'm going to go about five to make it a bit brighter. Nice. That's looking great. Let's minimize that menu. Now color correction, I don't really need to change anything, so I'm just gonna leave it. I will come down to motion blur and enable that. And that's obviously because I've got an animation. I want that motion blur to be happening or it's gonna look a bit crisp and a little bit weird. Now with the bloom, I am going to enable bloom and you're gonna see that it's like become super blown out and bright, like a 1970s, uh, days of our lives style clip with the scale. I'm just going to hold control and left click and just go 0.1 just so we have just a smidgen of the bloom. And that's pretty much just the setup that I'm going to have in terms of the post processing. Let's jump over into common. Now I'm not going to touch anything in geometry, but I will add just a smidgen global volumetric effects. So let's just right click on that one. I mean, sorry, left click on that one. Now the anapersotophory factor, which I can never say even in Blender. I am going to control the factor here. So control left click and about 0.95. And you can see how in the distance we've got that um, kind of fog happening. Volumetrics, that's the word. What this allows me to do is continue to have that world background present rather than you know, just a thick fog. Now coming into path tracing, if I click on sampling and caching, now depending on what you're after, if you're after performance or accuracy, caching, you want to disable if you want to have accuracy, but there will be a bit of a payment in longer render times. The many light sampling, you can also disable that, but I'm probably just going to leave that on for this one and denoising, firefly filtering, you know, just the standard stuff. I am gonna leave that on. And other than that, I am super happy with how that looks. Now we need to talk about the actual camera render settings. So from here, I'm gonna come up into window, rendering and movie capture. And this is where now I can play with those settings. At the very top here, we've got our frame rate. Now we're going to be grabbing the sequencer and we always want to have the current camera. So if we actually select one of these cameras, what's going to happen is it's going to render that camera specifically. So if we have current and we've got all our cameras animated in the sequencer up the top here, which we did in video four, that'll render out that sequence. Now we've got our frame size up the top here, how we're going to be rendering it what render preset we're going to render the animation as. So at the moment we've got current, but we can actually select RTX so that if we put this back into real time mode, it'll continue to render in the interactive mode. Now with these two, I don't touch them because I don't need to. Now this subframes per frame, that is the number of samples that'll be used to render the frame. And for those Blender users, you know what I'm talking about. So I'll pretty much just leave that as is. Coming down to the bottom, let's find a path to render our animation, name, depending on what you want to do. If you want to overwrite the existing frame images, enable that. If not, it'll create another number of that frame. And that just might be really, really annoying. If you don't want to overwrite, just put it in another folder. Trust me, it'll make your life easier. So uh, now it's time to go capture sequence, walk away, 
and um, make sure you hit subscribe and uh, check out how this animated short film came out. Just a little thing. My eight-year-old daughter did one of the voices. What?